Here we're going to take a look at our cam shake pack for After Effects, which are these presets for After Effects, which you're going to find in your user presets. Once you put them here, we do have a README doc that comes with the product. So that will show you where to put them, but you're going to grab them once you've downloaded them and you're going to put them into your documents, Adobe, the version of After Effects that you're currently using, and then into the user preset. Sometimes there isn't a user presets folder. If there's not, just create it, pop those in there, then restart your After Effects and they should populate right here for you. But I'm taking some same shots that I used for the promo and that I showed with the uh, Premiere Pro walkthrough as well to take a look at what we can do with these. And like I said, in the Premiere presets walkthrough, uh, this is actually something that we used on this specific short film. This is my short film, Ballistic. And in this scene, it was all very locked down and we decided after the fact to add a sort of handheld look to it. And we went with something subtle. So we'll grab this and we'll toss on the subtle effect there and you can see what it's doing already, but it's pushing our footage down. So we're gonna hit you and see what's going on here. And you can see that we have all the data right here, similar to adding tracking data onto here, because that's pretty much what's happening. These were created by taking an actual camera and shooting footage and then tracking that footage and bringing it in. So you're getting a very organic handheld look because that's exactly what it is. This is replicating the actual movement of real life handheld. So to correct this, we're not going to touch position or rotation, obviously. So instead, I'm going to hit A to bring up my anchor point, and I'm going to adjust my footage that way. And I'm going to need to zoom this footage in as well. So I'll bring it to about 116 maybe, and then go back to our anchor points. And I'm definitely going to need to keyframe this to get the shot framed how I want throughout. So I'm just going to hit the stopwatch for the anchor point and start watching it through, and I'll stop when I want it to adjust make that adjustment and then keep scrubbing through until I have something I'm happy with. And then we watch back through, make sure we're not seeing any edges. And there we go, we got a nice subtle handheld movement happening there, which is just adding a little bit of roughness and a little bit of energy into the scene so it's not feeling as still, which this absolutely shouldn't. A bomb just went off, this should feel chaotic, it's windy. So this is adding a little bit of that idea of that kinetic motion into it without it going overboard. And I think that works really well. But if we jump into another shot, something static like this, we could see what a lot of these shots are doing if we throw on, say, a medium. So there's a, a very nice, again, very organic handheld movement happening here. And if we jump over to action, you see it scales it up quite a bit because this is gonna have a lot more movement. And this is gonna be great if you're doing something like a fight scene or if a character is running and you shot it locked down. This is especially good for maybe a chase scene or again, that running scene, that's gonna work really well for that. You're never really gonna use that for something like this because it's very obvious and feels very weird. And then we got some erratic motions like this, which are great if, if you're doing maybe some kind of found footage bit or, or you're showing footage from maybe a spectator's viewpoint from some extreme circumstance, you know, like one of those news footage type deals that you see in films all the time. That would be great to throw in there. You don't have to animate that yourself. It's already right there for you to adjust and customize however you want. Then we have this one, which is actually called Tourist Witness. And, that, and that's supposed to be the idea there. But for me, really, this one is, just another very nice, very, very subtle handheld uh, feel going on there that works really, really well. And it's actually one of my favorites. Tourist, subtle, and medium are the ones I'm usually throwing onto my footage because those are the ones that, that usually just work really, really well for me. And then if we jump off onto something like this, this is when something like one of the action bits are gonna really come in handy. You're getting that feeling of intensity. The power that's coming from the wand is translating into the camera. So you're, you're getting that rocky motion that's really helping convey the thing that you're trying to do. But with one like this, once you're starting to get a lot of action, a lot of movement in it, you don't want it to stay sharp all the way through like this with the camera jumping around like that. So you're gonna wanna turn on motion blur to make sure you're adding that little bit of motion blur in that's gonna do a lot to make the movement really sell. And something that I like to do a lot with stuff like this is actually add a zoom. So I'll click S to bring up scale, A to bring up anchor point, and then U to bring up them all. Now I'm gonna scale my footage over time and adjust my anchor points. And then we'll adjust our anchor points for these two shots here since they are so different.
Now, obviously, I would make these two different clips in any normal circumstance, but we're just testing here, so this is fine. And you can see now we have that nice subtle zoom in along with the motion, which is adding a lot more energy to the scene than what it previously was. And if we just undo everything and go back to our original shot without any of these extras that we put on it, and it's a lot more boring than what we ended up with. So simple ideas like this are gonna do a lot to add a lot of value and emotion into your scene. And obviously a scene like this is perfect for it. We weren't going handheld because we didn't wanna have to deal with that extra tracking when we were already gonna be tracking the wand which was moving. So we went all locked down and added the motion in post. And again, doing it like this is a really great way to accomplish that. So check out the pack on our site and let us know what you think.